Okay, today we are going to be studying analyzing poetry. And to analyze poetry, you use the literary terms that we have been studying for the past couple of weeks to kind of understand how an author uses a poem to convey a certain message. The message may be different for you than it would be for someone else. That's kind of what's so important about analyzing poetry is so you can take away from it what you feel. And that's okay, but it may not be the original intended purpose of the author, but that doesn't make it wrong or or anything like that. It just makes it different, and that's fine. Um, so it's kind of like decoding what the author is trying to say or decoding the feelings that are brought on from it. You may decode it a different way than the author intended, and it's maybe not what the author was originally trying to convey, but it's just still important to evoke emotion, and that's what they're doing, or invoke ideas, and that's what they've done. So, also another means of this is music. A lot of times if you listen to a song, it may invoke some sort of emotional or emotional feeling or idea that maybe to someone else it doesn't happen to. This is kind of like based on your life experiences. So a lot of times your life experiences may cause you to feel a certain way about music that someone else may not because they haven't experienced the same things that you have. So this is the same way with poetry. Music and poetry, they're both not necessarily exactly sing-songy because you know a lot of poetry can be free verse. So it's not exactly the same, but the intention is still there, evoking emotion, a feeling, or an idea. And how people can view it in different ways is also important. So, <clears throat> now, I have provided three short poems that you can look through, and you're going to pick one that you're going to analyze. Um, they're short, so we should be able to do this in one class hour, and it will take about 15 to 20 minutes. So, the steps that you need to take in order to analyze your poem is the first thing you have to do is read the entire poem through. Don't mark anything because if you start marking then you may miss something and then you'll start analyzing too quickly. You kind of need to just let it soak in first read through. Then um, read the second, read it through a second time but this time read it line by line and really focus on everything that's happening. Look for all of your vocabulary words, alliteration, symbolism, similes, that sort of thing. And um, you can use your book, your list of vocabulary if you have it with you, and um, the internet and can also help you to find the, and you need to say proper vocabulary in order to get a good grade. You need to tell me what they're doing, why you think it's important that they're doing that, and it, I mean of course you may not be able to find everything and that's okay too, but just tell me what they're doing, how they're doing it, and what you think it means that they're doing, why they're, why they're using that specifically. Okay, and think about also a lot of poetry, how is it one full line that makes a sentence or does the sentence run on to the next line and what do you think that that means? It can mean different things in different poems and it may mean, I mean, it may mean nothing at all, but you can figure that out or you can give it purpose. If you think something doesn't mean anything at all, if you think they just put it in there to rhyme, then put that. If that's what you think, then that's what you think. So just, I just want your insight on what you think is happening in the poem, what you think the author is doing with that specifically. So <clears throat> who is the speaker? Is the speaker identified? Is that something that needs to be identified or is it you could be the speaker, or is there more than one speaker? Um, if the speaker's not identified at all, it could just be unidentified, and that's fine as well. But if you can figure out who the speaker is, or who, or if there's more than one speaker, then that's interesting as well, and you might add that in. Um, at the bottom of your page, or on the back of your page, you can write down your overall analysis, and uh, just tell me as much information as you can give. Anything that is thought-provoking or something that you just came up with. And that's okay, if, and we're going to change it if you need to, you know, that's fine. Just, and don't try to make this right or wrong or like, I have to find all the vocabulary words. Don't do that. Just focus on what you think the poem means and what literary elements are used in order to reach that goal. If that's what you feel. So... 
tell me at the bottom what you're feeling this poem is about and then tell me the literary elements that you feel contribute to your theory about what it means. <clears throat> and then um, just explain why you think the author might have added those things. And after this, when you get done, we'll have a discussion about what each of you have found in each of your poems. And some people may have the same ideas, some people may have different ideas. And that's kind of what's important about this is displaying the differences between you two. So that way you can learn how one person can see a different view than you. And it's perfectly fine. And that's kind of what's great about poetry is there sometimes isn't right or wrong answers. So please just use your imagination, but definitely nail down the literary elements that are important here because that's kind of what's going to be the base of how a poet works. Please also identify the type of poem that it is. Free verse, couplet, anything that you can find in there. Uh, definitely use the internet or use your book in order to identify the type of poem because even the type of poem can be a bigger meaning behind it. So try to nail that down as well. If you can't figure it out, that's fine. We'll work with you. Or you can, you can ask me and I'll help you. <clears throat> also, Another big factor that goes into poetry analysis is who wrote it actually. The speaker may not be the person that wrote it, but who wrote it, the reason that they wrote it could be affected by their time period, who they are, when they were born. There's a lot of factors that go into that. You don't have to do this, but if you want to learn more about this, then you can go in and you can learn more about the author, get some information, use the internet, use the book if you want. You don't have to do this, but if you want to learn more about the author, it can help you to fully understand the analysis of the poem. We're more doing, more just focusing on the words on the page. And that's, that's totally fine as well. You can take away from it what you want just from what's on the page as well. But historical analysis requires you to look up the author, the time period which it was written, and understand more about that. So if you want to do that, you can do that for extra credit. And I haven't nailed down exactly how much I want to give you for points for that. But if you do that, then it will further your analysis. Don't do that in class because, but you can do it outside of class and get more information. Or when we're done, you can look up, up on the internet. Or if you finish early, then you can look up on the internet. But don't include that with your full analysis for us because we just want to focus on the very basic, what's on the page, what you see. Because I don't want your, I don't want you to be influenced at all by historical analysis unless you want to do that on your own. So, Anyway, please take your time with this. I'm giving you about 15, 20 minutes. I think that'll be enough for these short poems. And just tell me what you think, how you, what it makes you feel, your ideas. Be sure to add literary elements.